Hey, hello, leaders. This is Paul Grau, Jr., and welcome back to Run to Your Leadership Challenges. Hey, today I want to talk about, you know, this is kind of a new new uh, sound and a little bit different approach. As I told you yesterday, it was, um, I took two months off, two months away from recording any podcasts, and I didn't even post any new ones. But one of the things that I mentioned yesterday is I lost several uh, friends and mentors over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, I want to give each of them a special tribute, especially uh, there's there's a few that really stand out. But one, one of the more recent ones that passed was Dan Miller. And if you don't aren't familiar with Dan, he is the author of the best-selling book, 48 Days to the Work You Love. And he's got a couple other books out there, several others. But I was first introduced to Dan by my wife back in 2014. And I was working at the VA at the time. My wife sent me an email and said, hey, I think um, we ought to check this out because I think this will be perfect for you. And what she was talking about was coaching. Dan was having a coaching uh, workshop at his house. And uh, it was like a two or three day workshop. And so I inquired, I, I looked into it. And a week or two later, my wife and I were at Dan's house in Franklin, Tennessee, learning how to be coaches or learning how to be coaches. And, you know, it was pretty amazing because I did some research on Dan before we went. And, you know, he's a big deal. It's this book, 48 Days to the Work You Love, it was a bestseller and a, a huge success. And he'd been on morning shows and all kinds of different places talking about this, this book. And I read through the book before we went, and it was a great book. And I truly believe everything written in that book. But as we were driving there, I was figuring that we'd see Dan, you know, an hour here, hour there out of the two or three days. And lo and behold, Dan was there the entire time. I mean, for two and a half days, he just poured into us his heart and soul. He told us everything that he'd learned. And well, he couldn't tell us everything in two and a half days, that's for sure. But I mean, he just poured it out. And I've been following Dan ever since. I was I became one of his uh, a certified coach through him. I was in his coaching mastery program for a few years, and I was on a Zoom call. You know, part of that coaching mastery was being on a Zoom call with Dan every every week. And there were several things that I learned off of Dan over the last nine years. And um, I just wanted to share them because I think everybody could benefit from these. And, um, you know, it, it's it's really scary in a way because – you know, Thanksgiving time, Dan thought he was a healthy 76-year-old man, as he stated in a video that he put out in late December. And then in December, he, uh, the beginning of December, he went out to Vegas to go to a U2 concert with his sons, and he had a great time, but when he was there, he wasn't feeling so good, so he made an appointment with his doctor when he got back home, he was living in uh, Florida now, I think uh, Sarasota or somewhere around that area. And so he went to see the doctor and the doctor gave him the news that he had advanced pancreatic cancer and there was no cure, no nothing that the doctor could do, no operation, no surgery. It had already spread to his liver or his liver and his blood and you know, the doctor gave him three to four months, I think uh, Dan said in the video. And it was like, wow. But Dan really met that challenge head on. He, he decided to stop his podcast, which he had done for 17 years. And he basically unplugged from his successful 48 days business and spent time with his family, his friends, and just making the most out of that last couple months or whatever he had left. And shockingly enough, 
six weeks later, or January 21st, he passed away. And you know, it's, um, so it just goes to show that life can take a major twist and a major turn in a moment. I mean, I'll share with you next week in a couple of tributes how one of my best friends in, from high school, he, uh, he died of a heart attack, like no notice, boom, gone. And man, it's just scary how, how fast life can change. And it made me think about a lot of different things. And I'm going a little bit different direction with this podcast, but I just wanted to share five things that I learned from Dan. Number one, it was consistency. He preached consistency to all of his coaches. I know every call that we were on, that would come up. The, be consistent. Keep doing what you're doing. Adjust as you go to be relevant, but just keep doing what you're doing. Keep showing up. Keep doing what you're doing. And Dan, like I said earlier, did that podcast for 17 years. He didn't miss an episode for 17 years. Every week he came out with a new podcast. And you could still listen to that podcast, 48 Days to the Work You Love. Just uh, probably search Dan Miller. And you can hear his final podcast where he tells the story of hearing about his illness and everything. But he was very consistent, not only in his podcast, but whenever you saw Dan, he was the same Dan no matter what. I saw, I ran into him in conferences. I've been to his house several times for workshops. Um, you know, and whenever I heard him or saw him or talked to anybody else, he was the same Dan. He was very consistent. Second thing is Dan taught me is, and this was kind of his motto and kind of his quote, but you can live a life where you make a living doing exactly what you love. You can make a living, or you can live a life where you make a living doing what you love. And that's what Dan preached. 48 Days to the Work You Love was all about that, finding your, your work that you love so you can live it out. Life is too short. So don't waste your life working in a job that you don't love. And if you don't love your job right now, I'm not telling you just to quit. Come up with an exit plan. Start looking. And a good place to start is read that book, 48 Days of the Work You Love, because he lays it out. And I think he recently came out with a, I don't know, it's like 20th, 25th anniversary um, edition where it's all updated. <clears throat> so you can live a life that you love and work that you love. Number three smiling is contagious. This this is what I learned from Dan because Dan had a smile that was very contagious and you could tell he was always smiling on his podcast because that smile, that joy that he had came through his podcast. It came out in his voice and there was no doubting when you listen to a podcast or you you look at him or you see him and he always had that smile. And who knows, he could have been going through some rough stuff, but he always had a smile. He was always there and he would cheer you up. Number four, fourth thing I learned is give honest feedback, even if it's harsh. That's the only way to truly help others. You know, some of the podcasts that Dan did, he he gave advice on careers. People would write into him. And um, I know when I became a coach with him, I had some one-on-one -on -one coaching time with him. And some of the things that he shared with me, man, they were, they were brutal. But it was tough love. I needed to hear that. And because he was honest with me and upfront with me, and he gave me that, that, you know, that, that love, that harsh feedback, that tough love feedback, because he gave me that, I'm better today. I became a better coach, and that's the only way to give feedback. I'm not saying always look for, for tough love to give somebody, because you may not have to give it, but 
if you have to give somebody difficult feedback, even if it's harsh feedback, even if it's stuff that's difficult to tell them, just tell them and tell them in love. Tell them that you are telling them this because you care so much about them. And that's what Dan did with me. And um, a lot of the stuff he told me, like I said, I, I kind of shook my head and he was like, hey, I know this is tough to hear, but I'd rather you hear it from me than, than not hear it from anybody. And that was the case. So give honest feedback. And the fifth one was, as long as you have the desire, it's never too late to start something new. You know, Dan used to tell a story a lot. He did a lot of different things in his life, and he failed at a lot of different things in his life, but he never stopped searching, and he never stopped trying. And he was 76. I didn't know he was 76. I wouldn't have guessed he was that old because he was always looking for something new. And he used to have a saying that if somebody told him something three different times, or if he heard it, if three different people asked him for a something, a product or, or a podcast or something, he would make a product about that. And I'll tell you, it's never too late. When you do what you love, you're going to be doing that the rest of your life because you love to do it. Not because it's work, but it's because you love to do it. So that's it. This is my tribute to Dan Miller. Um, great guy, great coach. Everybody I know that knows him says that he was just a champion of a man. And I concur with that. He was a great guy. He was here to help others. He served others. He was a true servant leader. And like I said, those five things, consistency, you can live the life where you make a living doing what you love. Smiling is contagious. Give honest feedback. And as long as you have that desire, it's never too late to start something new. So that's it for today. I hope you um, gain something from this. And like I said, I would recommend that you uh, listen to Dan's podcast. Go check out that book, 48 Days to the Work You Love, if you haven't read it, because, uh, man, you'll learn stuff and you'll see that it is possible to find that work that you love. Hey, it's it for today. I'm going to skip the weekend. Come on back Monday. And I got a couple other tributes next week that I want to share. And then I'm going to get more into this whole purposeful leader. And I'm going to talk about that next week. So until Monday, run to your challenges. We'll see you.